You guys, none of us saw this coming, not even me, and I know that you didn't. American Idol is getting ugly, but in a good way for us, very entertaining. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The Hollywood Reporter is reporting that the Idol producers are allegedly hatching a secret plan to jumpstart the declining ratings by replacing Mariah Carey with Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> right? Right? I never saw this coming, but that is so perfect. <laughs> because, okay. Allegedly, the plan to replace Mariah mid-season was dumped after Mariah apparently threatened legal action. <laughs> the Idol producers are now denying the rumor, saying that this probably got started because, um, you know, we are in talks with Jennifer to perform on the season finale. In the meantime, I believe this story up and down. <laughs> I think that this story is a beautiful thing. Uh, when Jennifer performs on that season finale, make sure that you have equal camera time on Mariah sitting there. <laughs> okay? Now listen very closely, because sometimes you all get my words twisted. I love Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey is an icon. Mariah Carey is like an old, vintage Rolls Royce from the 1920s. I'm talking about, would you listen? So, that's more rare than a Rolls Royce from 2013. If, it, if it's been refurbished and everything, she is only supposed to be brought out and trotted around on particular days of the year. She's too, she's too special. They're not quite getting what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to be as clear as I can. She's so special that we don't need, need to be seeing her. I've said this to you uh, before. We don't need to be seeing her talk and, and act every single week. She's so special that I think it's corny even that she has her nail uh, thing. You know, she's, she's got like products and stuff. There was a point in Mariah Carey's career where all she did was sing. And I respected that so much because she sings like none of those other girls do. <laughs> None of them. <laughs> Mariah, Mariah is a music purist. She's so special that she doesn't need a clothing line and nail line and to be sitting on some judge's table. She is so special. Leave that other side hustle stuff to girls who really don't sing well like Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> now, and and I must tell you, some of Mariah's biggest fans work right here at Wendy, and we sit and we powwow about it because, and, and we all agree that, that this move for her to be on American Idol was a big mistake because all of a sudden she's not as special as she used to be. Plus, in terms of her judging, she's not bringing it. And the idea that she's gonna be fired and they're plotting is not, it, that's like a black mark on her record. And the idea that Jennifer Lopez Pez can swoop down and take the job, even if she doesn't take it, Jennifer, I do believe that they offered it to you. And Mariah, you should probably basically just bow out to save face. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if you quit before they fire you, then you win. That's all. And by the way, Mariah's not the only one that they're thinking about replacing. Nicki Minaj. I'm thinking that Nicki Minaj is part of you know, what's helping this, sh this show this season, even though the ratings are terrible. However, I wanna do it by claps. Clap if you're happy that Nicki Minaj might be going away. <laughs> well, reportedly, 99% of our studio audience agrees with older Southern and Midwestern women who think that Nikki is not right for the show and that she's too aggressive. That's, 
You think aggressive is the correct word? Because that's what the, that's what the surveys are saying from these women. Crazy. Crazy. Not relatable? Yes. Too many costumes? Yes. She toned it down. She's been, for Nikki, she's been looking normal. Listen, I, th I don't think that this is a color thing. You know, I, I, you know, as far as, you know, aggressive, sometimes that could be, you know, um, um, backslash, you know, black woman. Um, I, don't, I don't think that that's what people are seeing in terms of color. I think that they're seeing the rap thing, you know, the, the sometimes distasteful lyrics that a lot of people can't relate to and whatnot. Quite frankly, I do think it's the rap thing. And I, don't, I think the only rapper, rapstress, that um, would be accepted by all of you and all of the Midwest and all of us at any judging, judge's table is Queen Latifah. <laughs> But now it's too late to ask her because she's busy preparing for her talk show, which starts in September. <laughs> anyway, moving on to Beyonce. So she kicked off this world tour. We've been telling you about it, but every day there's something new to tell you, so we continue. Do you see her swooping in on a zip line like Andy Dick on American Idol? <laughs> well, she's singing Love on Top there and she's tossing it and doing it in that cat suit. I love it. But get this. Beyonce is banning photographers from her concert to avoid unflattering photos. Instead, she wants to hire her own photographers who will provide the media with pre-approved images like, well, like this one. She likes that. Do you notice how there's more material in the crotch so that she's not getting, she's not getting a front wedgie, girl? Do you, do you, do you know what I'm saying? Uh, this new rule comes after the unattractive photos that have surfaced, like the one at the Super Bowl, which looked like this. <laughs> Where she's got the muscle face and, you know, and the, but the thing is, Beyonce, what planet do you live on? You can't ban cameras. Everybody's got cell phones with cameras. And now, and now, even the cell phones zoom in. And, and also, people still walk around with those cameras that hang around your head where you go like this and really zoom in. So you can't, you can't ban cameras, Beyonce. Listen, we all know that you're beautiful. Everybody has unflattering pictures of them out there someplace. You can't really control that. The only, I hate taking pictures too, though. I mean, like, like, like the unflattering pictures. Like sometimes I'll see you guys out um, you know, at the stores and you'll ask, you know, can you take a picture? And I always say no. I, I, I mean, how you doing? To a lot of you I say, I, I always say no, but listen to the reason that I say no, because first of all, the, the difference between your height and my height is usually so great, and then the short person taking the picture is short, and then you're taking the picture, so, so it's from here up, you know, my nose, and when you see me out at the shop, right, like I'm not wearing makeup, and I don't feel like being shady and putting on sunglasses, and I just don't even wanna go through it. And then a lot of you all think that because I sit here laughing and rubbing my teeth and twisting my wig and stuff on the show, that it's cool to come up to me and lay on my boobs. Like, that is not cool. <laughs> that, like, that is not cool. And then, and then, and then like with the men, you know, a lot of you men, you just don't know how to take a picture. Like, I don't put your hands around my waist. Keep your hands to your sides and let's take the picture. So I don't even like to bother. I'll tell you what I give to you better than a picture. I give you a conversation. Like, I'll stand there and talk to you. We'll talk about nails. We'll talk about the price of milk. We'll talk about feet. We'll talk about whatever. You can do it and ask Wendy. Like, I always do that, but I'm just not big into taking the pictures. And then some of you get slick and you want to send like your eight-year-old over. Go, go over and take a picture with Miss Wendy. Okay, so now here comes the baby coming over to take the picture. I'm like, hey, honey bunch, um, I, can I take a picture? <laughs> well, honey bunch, Miss Wendy doesn't take pictures. And I look over at the mom like, mm-hmm. <laughs> But I'm like, but I'm like, so what grade are you in? How are you doing in school? What do you want to be when you grow up? And you know, so on and so forth. So then she has a conversation. I said, okay, so I have to go, but but you know, you know, you have a nice day. And she walks back over to her mother, and the picture hasn't been taken, but the conversation has been had. And it's, to me, that's a little bit more memorable. Yeah. That's all. Okay. I have to get to this Lauren Hill story. Okay, uh, you might have heard about this. You know, Lauren uh, is uh, gonna be staying out of prison for now, but she's got only 30 seconds to come up with a little over $500,000. Okay, 
Lauren was in court on Monday over in New Jersey, right near my house, so I can follow this. Uh, <laughs> I can follow this case uh, personally. <laughs> um, uh, for sentencing after pleading guilty to not reporting $1.8 million in income. Oh. Lauren claims she intentionally hasn't filed her tax return for 2001, excuse me, 2005, 2006, and 2007 because of a very real threat that, to herself and her family. That's what she said. What planet does she live on? <laughs> where she said, I didn't, fire, I didn't file intentionally. Don't most people say they blame it on their accountant or something like that, or gross oversight? So the judge told Lauren that she has two weeks to pay up $504,000 in back taxes. Those are the taxes on that 1.8. If she doesn't pay that money in two weeks, which of course, this is Monday, so now she's got less time than, than two weeks. If she doesn't pay up, then she's gonna be sentenced to 24 to 30 months in prison. Oh. Prison. And that's not all. By the way, Lauren, really girl? <laughs> um, TMZ is saying that Lauren stopped paying rent on her South Orange mansion, that's in New Jersey, last month. Her landlord, landlord and mansion don't even go together in the same <laughs> sentence, right? But anyway. Her landlord is moving forward with the eviction process. Lauren is claiming on her Tumblr page that uh, you know this is not true you know, regarding the landlord, and here's what she says. Does anybody smell cuckoo? Cuckoo, cuckoo, okay, okay, just asking. <laughs> I'd like to set the record straight. I am not squatting. I do not owe any money to my landlord. I have always stayed current on my rent. These allegations are not only false, but insulting. Now here's my problem with Lauren. You know, she does have this money to, to pay if she wanted to. Even if she doesn't have it in the bank, and I'm not counting her money, but you know, La Lauren Hill is a brilliant writer. She wrote all that miseducational Lauren Hill stuff. The problem with Lauren is that she's so, I guess, earthy and anti-establishment that she has not sold off her music to be like in a Tide commercial or a Chrysler commercial or something like that. Think about it. If you write your own, those coins come in forever. If you would just, And then, when she goes on tour, she's all weird. Like the music that you want to sing along to, that she, that you want her to do, she doesn't do. She lectures the crowd on how the man is, is you know, <laughs> the devil. And then she sings this music that we have no idea of. So Lauren, it's t I think it's time for you to come, maybe back down to earth. Uh, you have like 150 kids, and you're a single mom. <laughs> and if you go to jail, if you go to jail for 24 to 30 months, you know, who, I mean, I get it, you got your parents to take care of your kids, but Lauren, uh, hello, come back to us and pay those taxes. <laughs>